What's happening, everybody? My name is Tyler. This is Jehovah's Truth. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that uh, I saw recently. I watched the presidential or the vice presidential um, debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance. And I would have to say that after seeing that, I was impressed for many reasons. Um, for example, uh, J.D. Vance delivered I mean, he was basically a professional. I've never seen a president, uh, presidential debate like this in all my years, or a vice presidential debate for that matter. I've never seen one. But um, I wanted to bring out a few uh, talking points that they had. Um, and the title of this video I'm going to address a little later in this video because um, it's wild. But uh, Yeah, let's get started. I wanted to start with uh, immigration when the uh, subject was brought up to uh, J.D. Vance and Tim Walls, it was quite interesting. All right, watch this. Okay, so this basically was a question that was asked to Tim Walls and J.D. Vance about the immigration. Just pay attention to this, please, because this is crazy. Absolutely insane. We're going to turn now to immigration. The crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border consistently ranks as one of the top issues for American voters. Senator Vance, your campaign is pledging to carry out the largest mass deportation plan in American history and to use the U.S. military to do so. Could you be more specific about exactly how this will work? For example, would you deport parents who have entered the U.S. illegally and separate them from any of their children who were born on U.S. soil. You have two minutes. So first of all, Margaret, before we talk about deportations, we have to stop the bleeding. We have a historic immigration crisis because Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. 94 executive orders suspending deportations, decriminalizing illegal aliens, uh, massively increasing the asylum fraud that exists in our system. That has opened the floodgates. And what it's meant is that a lot of fentanyl is coming into our country. I had a mother who struggled with opioid addiction. Okay, before before I continue this, um, I would have to agree with the uh, uh, Senator Vance here. Um, the Biden uh, Kamala administration definitely did want the uh, immigrants to surge through the border, and I have video proof of this. It was uh, um, Biden during his presidential debate uh, before he was elected, and I'll show that to you guys real quick. Now, pay very close attention to what this gentleman says here. Because it's crazy. This is Joe Biden, by the way. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Now, guys, remember, um, Joe Biden was in full favor of seeking refuge for asylum. I don't know exactly what that means. But it allowed a lot of illegals and uh, members of the drug cartels to enter the country and um, give fentanyl to everybody. And it's not even fentanyl. There's a, a drug that's called Trank. It's like a tr horse tranquilizer and something else mixed that uh, eats the flesh. Anyways, uh, I'm going to play this video and continue it here. Uh, r massively increasing the asylum fraud that exists in our system, that has opened the floodgates. And what it's meant is that a lot of fentanyl is coming into our country. I had a mother who struggled with opioid addiction and has gotten clean. I don't want people who are struggling ad with addiction to be deprived of their second chance because Kamala Harris led in fentanyl into our communities at record levels. So you've got to stop the bleeding. You've got to re-implement Donald Trump's border policies, build the wall, re-implement deportations, and that gets me to your point, Margaret, about what do we actually do? So we've got 20, 25 million illegal aliens who are here in the country. What do we do with them? I think the first thing that we do is we start with the criminal migrants. About a million of those people have committed some form of crime in addition to crossing the border illegally. I think you start with deportations on those folks. And then I think you make it harder for illegal aliens to undercut the way. G.D. Vance makes a very good point here. He says that there are millions that cross the border illegally and we should basically prosecute those who've committed crimes. The very fact that they're illegal aliens means that they have committed a crime and they should be prosecuted. 
and I have nothing against immigrants because this entire country was built on immigration. We are all immigrants, every single one of us. But there's a process. There's a process that has to take place in order for someone to be in this country illegally. This is a country of immigration, but it's done a certain way. And when it isn't done a certain way, it puts people's lives in um, danger. But, uh, yeah. Now, if you notice uh, through this entire uh, speech here given by J.D. Vance, uh, Tim Walls, when he looked at him, he looked... Let me rewind it real quick, okay? Look at his face. Actually, you know what? I should rewind a little further because it's even more damning. This man, look at his level, look at his face, his concern. This man realizes that um, the person that picked him for VP or vice president is an absolute monster, and I'll get to that later. But she is, is absolutely awful. I wouldn't mind voting Democrat or Republican because I'm not political. I take no sides. But when it comes to this presidential debate, the, this presidential election, I'm going to be have to vote Dem or uh, uh, Republican. I'm going to have to do it, and there's a reason for it. But look at this man's face. This gentleman here, Tim Walls, realizes what he's going to get himself into. He looks like he's in uh, emotional pain for these people. He understands the damage that Kamala has done, and he is forced at this point to defend her, and it doesn't look like he really wants to. That's my opinion. I mean, I can read a little bit of body language, but this is this is crazy. If, if it was me, I've seen uh, uh, throughout this entire debate Tim Walls absolutely nod his head in agreement with ev almost everything that uh, – J.D. Vance was saying, and I was I was blown away. Uh, Tim Walls has a little bit of common sense. I mean, I, I honestly believe Tim Walls wants better for this country. I don't know how well he's – I think he's the governor of Minnesota. I don't know what Minnesota's like. But it seems like Tim Walls may be a decent person for that matter, and he wants the best for this country. Maybe. I don't know. But how he's looking at what uh, uh, J.D. Vance, as J.D. Vance is speaking, tells me that – Tim Walls realizes what he has put himself into. I feel bad for him in a way. I would never want to be a vice president for Kamala Harris. And like I said, I'll get to the reason why later. Separation. Right now in this country, Margaret, we have 320,000 children that the Department of Homeland Security has effectively lost. Some of them have been sex trafficked. Some of them hopefully are at homes with their families. Some of them have been used as drug trafficking mules. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. And I'd ask my fellow Americans to remember when she came into office, she said she was going to do this. Real leadership would be saying, you know what? I screwed up. We're going to go back to Donald Trump's border policies. I wish that she would do that. It would be good for all of us. Governor, do you care to respond to any of those specific allegations, including that the vice president is, quote, letting in fentanyl and using kids as drug mules, among other things, yeah, regarding well, children? The drug mule is not true. But I will say about this, about the fentanyl, because this is a crisis of this, the opioid crisis. And the good news on this is, is the last 12 months saw the largest decrease in opioid deaths in our nation's history, 30 percent decrease in Ohio. But there's still more work to do. But let's go back to this on immigration. Kamala Harris was the attorney general of the largest state in a border state in California. She's the only person in this race who prosecuted transnational gangs for human trafficking and drug interventions. But look, we all want to solve this. I, most of us want to solve this, and that is the United States Congress. That's the Border Patrol agents. That's the Chamber of Commerce. That's most Americans out here. That's why we had the fairest and the toughest bill on immigration that this nation's seen. It was crafted by a conservative senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford. I know him. He's super conservative, but he's a man of principle, wants to get it done. Democrats and Republicans worked on this piece of legislation. The Border Patrol said, this is what we need in here. These are the experts. And the Chamber of Commerce and the Wall Street Journal said, pass this thing. Kamala Harris helped get there. 1,500 new border agents, detection for drugs, DOJ money to speed up these uh, the adjudications on this, just what America wants. But as soon as I was getting ready to pass and actually tackle this, Donald Trump said no. 
told them to vote against it because it gives him a campaign issue. It gives him to what would Donald Trump talk about if we actually did some of these things? And they need to be done by the legislature. You can't. Mr. Tim Walls, I would have to disagree with you because I remember in two, uh, 2022, between 2022 and 2023, Joe Biden had three days. I mean, at least to continue the bill that would keep the border closed. And he did not even sign it. I'm sure this is what happened because I watched the entire thing. We had three days. It was all over the news. Biden was uh, uh, could have uh, continued the bill that Trump had uh, in place for the immigration. Biden didn't want it. Biden and Harris were so dead set on reversing all the policies that Donald Trump had made that they let that one go. And what happened after that? The uh, illegal immigrants came right in. They came right in, all of them, in troves. It was crazy. I don't ever remember Trump saying, open the border. In fact, he was very adamant on closing the border and building walls, walls, excuse me, building walls and the uh, a lot, uh, quite a bit of people in Congress, and quite a bit of people, not only in Congress, but all around the nation were against it. They hated him for it, and they tried to impeach him for it, said he was a cruel man. And, hey, our borders are open now, and now we have um, a crisis, a drug crisis. There, the People have been murdered. I'm pretty sure... Um, I don't remember what her name is, but a mother was killed just taking a hike. That's all she was doing. She was brutally killed. I don't want to say how, but it was bad. I tell you what, if I found out one day that my wife and two daughters were slaughtered by any illegal immigrant or or any person for that matter, I would hunt them down. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh I would just say there'd be uh, consequences. When the law doesn't do anything for the people, sometimes the people have to take the law into their own hands. They have to take action. Well, I mean, for instance, uh, back in 2022, I believe it was, in Chicago, there was a law that was passed that was called the... Uh, what was it called? It was basically saying that you couldn't report a crime in a way... And you have to uh, take justice in your own hands. I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, are you serious? Is that where we are right now? We can't be protected by our own government. They're supposed to protect and serve us. We are their main priority, not these people that come in from our borders. And it's not just the borders in Mexico. It's all over. They're being flown in by buses. I know this for a fact because I worked at this place called CK. Now it's called Creative Liquid uh, liquid Coatings. But they flew in Venezuelans. Great people. I thought they were great people. But the problem was that they were moving in so many. They were kicking everybody out that they had to pay more money to. They paid these Venezuelans nothing and then stuck them in trailers, put them in like mobile homes, all of them, like two to a room, and the owner charged them rent, each one. They were slaves. Not only do I, 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 I don't appreciate illegal immigration. I don't like how illegal immigrants are treated. I don't like it. They're treated like slaves. And then the, uh, the Democratic Party is uh, using them for illegal votes. Yeah, and just do sick. this through the executive branch. So That's look, we have the options to do this. Reasons. Donald Trump anyways, had four years. I will continue this. He video. had four years to do this. And he promised you, America, how easy it would be. I'll build you a big, beautiful wall, and Mexico will pay for it. Less than 2% of that wall got built, and Mexico didn't pay a dime. But here we are again, nine years after he came down that escalator, dehumanizing people and telling them what he was going to do. As far as the deportation plan, at one point, Senator Vance said it was so unworkable to be laughable. So that's where we're at. Pass the bill. She'll sign it. Governor, your time is up. Uh, Senator, the question was, will you separate parents from their children, even if their kids are U.S. citizens? You have one minute. 
Margaret, my point is that we already have massive child separations thanks to Kamala Harris's open border. And I didn't accuse Kamala Harris of inviting drug mules. I said that she enabled the Mexican drug cartels to operate freely in this country. And we know that they use children as drug mules. And it is a disgrace. And it has to stop. Look, I think what Tim said just doesn't pass the smell test. For three years, Kamala Harris went out bragging that she was going to undo Donald Trump's border policy. She did exactly that. We had a record number of illegal crossings. We had a record number of fentanyl coming into our country. And now, now that she's running for president, or a few months before, she says that somehow she got religion and cared a lot about a piece of legislation. The only thing that she did when she became the vice president, when she became the appointed border czar was to undo 94 Donald Trump executive actions that okay guys I'm gonna say this right now this is the point where I realized that I will never vote for uh, 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 Kamala Kamala um, what did Joe Biden say uh, Kamala I will never vote for Kamala Harris and I will show you why okay pay very close attention to this because this is absolutely insane I I Google searched what is vice president What is vice president All right The vice president of the United States is the second highest office in the executive branch of the U- U.S. federal government. That's, uh, first of all, and then it says here, what is the role of the vice president? This is Kam- Kamala Harris's position. She is vice president of the United States. The primary responsibility of the bri- uh, vice president of the United States is to be ready at a moment's notice to assume the presidency if the president is unable to perform his or her duties. So what this is, is second, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the vice president is the second highest position in office of his executive uh, branch, right behind the, uh, the president of the United States. They are the highest. They are the highest. And what is their role? To assume responsibility of president if the president is unable to perform his or her duties. Now, what can we say about Joe Biden? As far as I am concerned, Joe Biden is very incoherent. I mean, it isn't his fault. His age caught up with him. And uh, a lot of the times he can't really answer questions correct. I mean, he doesn't answer questions directly. And quite a, uh, quite a few times he's embarrassed by the poor decisions he has made. And I'm going to show you proof of this. Now, this video clip that I have is uh, Joe Biden being a question about his withdrawal of troops in Afghanistan or Palestine. I, I don't remember which. It was somewhere in the Middle East. But um, watch how he reacts. This reaction is not somebody I consider a, a leader of a country ever. But he's older. He's older. He makes poor decisions. The age is catching up with him. A lot of people give him hate. I don't give him too much hate because, I mean, old people make unrash decisions. In fact, my um, one of my wife's friends named Jerry flipped out on me. He lost his mind one time because me and my wife weren't giving, uh, weren't, weren't, uh, according to him, we, we weren't being friends. But we talked to him every day. We, we were always joking with him, went fishing with him. We did everything with this man. I miss him. He eventually died, but I mean, old age will take a toll on the mind. That's how bad it is. But watch Joe Biden's response here. It's absolutely insane. Mr. President, there had not been a U.S. service member killed in combat in Afghanistan since February of 2020. You set a deadline, you pulled troops out, you sent troops back in, and now 12 Marines are dead. You said the buck stops with you. Do you bear any responsibility for the way that things have unfolded in the last two weeks? I bear responsibility for fundamentally all that's happened of late. But here's the deal. You know, I wish you'd one day say these things. 
you know as well as I do that a former president made a deal with the Taliban that he would get all American forces out of Afghanistan by May 1. In return, the commitment was made, and that was a year before. In return, he was given a commitment that the Taliban would continue to attack. Bam. Bam. Just look at how he's gripping his binder there, though. This man realizes the mistake that he has made. <laughs> and it's sad. It's sad. People call him a disgrace. Man's just old. He's old. He's old as dirt. He should have never been elected in the first place. But here we are. He's made some poor decisions. But I don't believe they were his own decisions. I don't. You know. I uh, I have nothing against Joe Biden. I think he tried to do his best. But he was, he was controlled by the people above him. And he made some d uh, disgusting mistakes. But he's old. And everyone, everyone in his, uh, excuse me, in his administration pretended like there was nothing wrong with him, but there was. It was evident. I'm gonna continue this, okay? Others, but would not attack any American forces. Remember that? I'm, I'm being serious. I, no, I, I'm asking you a question. Be, uh, because before. No, 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 wait a minute. I'm asking you a question. Is that, is that accurate? The best you talking about, but Mr. President, respectfully, since that I don't think that the issue that, uh, do you think that people have an issue with pulling out of Afghanistan or just the way that things have happened? I think they have an issue that people are likely to get hurt. Some, as we've seen, have gotten killed and that it is messy. Imagine where we'd be if I had indicated on May the 1st, I was not going to renegotiate a, a evacuation date. We were going to stay there. I'd have only one alternative, pour thousands of more troops back into Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, it was time to end a 20-year war. Thank you so much. Absolutely shameful, guys. Absolutely shameful. I have never seen anything like that before. And it made me sad for Joe Biden because I realized that as many mistakes as he's made, he's not in power. He's not in power, and he never has been. It, the, the people above him, or above, above him, I would have to say the elites or whoever is pulling the strings, made him forced him to make these decisions that cost Americans their lives. And uh, he was just a puppet. And it's elderly abuse. It really is. I, at some point, at some point in Joe Biden's uh, political history, he was a conservative. But the, um, the ones controlling him got to him. Why do you think he dropped out of the race? They threatened him. Nancy Pelosi said... That we would do this the easy way or the hard way. What's the hard way? Are they going to kill him? Are they going to poison him? It just makes me sick. That this man was used as a puppet. And disgraced. And defamed in such a way. There are a lot of good Democrats out there. There are. There are a lot of good Republicans. And there's corrupt ones on both sides. My question is. Obviously, we've seen the videos or uh, seen video evidence of uh, Joe Biden's in, uh, not in, I would say in, uh, incompetence, but also his inability to be president of the United States. Would that not make Kamala Kam uh, Kamala Harris the president of the United States since she has to take over at a no uh, moment's notice? She has done a terrible job since day one. And she's telling us she's going to do all of these things to fix our country. She hasn't done it. I have no reason to vote for Kamala Harris. No reason. Hi, Cammy. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's an absolute disgrace that uh, 
they did this to Joe Biden. It makes me angry. Um, let me move over a little bit. <clears throat> okay. All right, we're going to play this. Ready, guys? Let's go. Actions ...that open the border. This problem is leading to massive problems in the United States of America. Parents who can't afford health care, schools that are overwhelmed, it's got to stop, and it will when Donald Trump is president Senator, again. Senator, your time is up. Governor, what about our CBS News polling, which does show that a majority of Americans, more than 50 percent, support mass deportations? Look, we fix this issue with a bill that is necessary. But the issue on this is this is what happens when you don't want to solve it. You demonize it. And we saw this. And, and Senator Vance, and it surprises me on this, talking about and saying I will create stories to bring attention to this. That vilified a large number of people who were here legally in the community of Springfield. The Republican governor said it's not true. Don't do it. There's consequences for this. There's consequences. We could come together. Senator Langford did it. We could come together and solve this if we didn't let Donald Trump continue to make it an issue. And the consequences in Springfield were the governor had to send state law enforcement to escort kindergartners to school. I believe Senator Vance wants to solve this, but by standing with Donald Trump and not working together to find a solution, it becomes a talking point. And when it becomes a talking point like this, we dehumanize and villainize other human beings. T Tim, Governor, it, it, Governor, your time is up. Senator, I'll give you one minute, but I, let me just ask you the question please. first. Uh, the governor has made the point, and I think as a sitting lawmaker, you know that Congress controls the purse strings and any funding. So you have said repeatedly that Donald Trump would, through executive action, solve this. Do you disagree that Congress controls the purse strings and would need to support many of the changes that you would actually want to implement? You have one minute. Look, Margaret, first of all, the gross majority of what we need to do at the southern border is just empowering law enforcement to do their job. I've been to the southern border more than our borders are. Kamala Harris has been. And it's actually heartbreaking because the Border Patrol agents, they just want to be empowered to do their job. Of course, additional resources would help. But most of this is about the president and the vice president empowering our law enforcement to say, if you try to come across the border illegally, you've got to stay in Mexico. You've got to go back through proper channels. Now, Governor Waltz broke, brought up the community of Springfield, and he's very very worried about the things that I've said in Springfield. Look, in Springfield, Ohio, and in communities all across this country, you've got schools that are overwhelmed. You've got hospitals that are overwhelmed. You have got housing that is totally unaffordable because we brought in millions of illegal immigrants to compete with Americans for scarce homes. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio, are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. It is a disgrace, Tim. And I actually think, I agree with you. I think you want to solve this problem, but I don't think that Kamala Harris does. Senator, your time is up. Governor, you have one minute to respond. Yeah, well, it, it is law enforcement that asked for the bill. They helped craft it. They're the ones that supported it. It was That's because they know we need to do this. Look, this issue of continuing to bring this up, of not dealing with it, of blaming migrants for everything. On housing, we could talk a little bit about Wall Street speculators buying up housing and making them less affordable. But it becomes a blame. Look, this bill also gives the money necessary to adjudicate. I agree it should not take seven years for an asylum claim to be done. This bill gets it done in 90 days. Then you start to make a difference in this, and you start to adhere to what we know, American principles. Look, I don't talk about my faith a lot. But Matthew 25, 40 talks about to the least amongst us, you do unto me. I think that's true of most Americans. They simply want order to it. This bill does it. It's funded. It's supported by the people who do it. And it lets us keep our dignity about how we treat other people. Thank you, Governor. And just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio, does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status Temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you, Senator. We have no, 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 so course. much to get to. Margaret, I, I think you, it's important we're because we're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you, Margaret. The, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check, and since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app, 
or you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own Thank you, Senator, for leadership. describing the legal process. We have so much to get to, Senator. Those laws have been on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the, the, the we want to have. The CBP has not been on the books it's since 1990. It's something that Kamala Harris created, Margaret. Gentlemen, you're the audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. We have so much we want to get to. Thank you for explaining the legal process. Nora. Thank you, Margaret. They cut that man's mic. <sighs> they fact-checked him. They fact-checked uh, J.D. Vance, saying that uh, all those Asian or Haitians that were in Springfield were illegal, or were illegal and uh, J.D., uh, J.D. Vance said, you know, basically that the app didn't exist in 1990, which I've never heard of a phone app existing in 1990. Uh, maybe after 2012? Maybe? But, yeah, it's crazy. And the rule for this uh, debate was no fact-checking, and they broke the rule. The moderators broke the rule. That upset me very much. Upset me very much. Now, to the meat of this video. I want to show you something Tim Wall said that blew my mind, okay? Blew my mind, and it's about gun violence in schools. Gun violence in schools, everybody. Let's check it out. My dear friends, listen to this very closely. Please listen to what Tim Wall says about gun violence. Just listen. Governor, you previously opposed an assault weapons ban, but it's only later in your political career did you change your position. Why? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Look, the NRA, I was the NRA guy for a long time. They this man literally just said he became friends with school shooters. Listen to it again, please. Governor, you previously opposed an assault weapons ban, but it's only later in your political career did you change your position. Why? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Look, the NRA, I was the NRA guy for a long time. They used to teach gun safety. I'm of an age where my shotgun was in my car so I could pheasant hunt after football practice. That's not where we live today. And several things I want to mention on this is talking about cities and where it's at, the number one where the most Firearm deaths happen in Minnesota are rural suicides. And we have an epidemic of children getting guns and shooting themselves. And so we have and we should look at all of the issues. Making sure folks have health care and all that, but I want to be very careful. This idea of stigmatizing mental health, just because you have a mental health issue doesn't mean you're violent. And I think what we end up doing is we start looking for a scapegoat. Sometimes it just is the guns. It's just the guns, and, and there are things that you can do about it. But I do think that this is one, and I think this is a healthy conversation. I think there's a capacity to find solutions on this that work, protect Second Amendment, protect our children. That's our priority. Now, I, like I said, I, I'm going to vote for Trump regardless because of uh, the fact that uh, Kamala Harris is vice president, and she hasn't done anything to change this country. Me and my family are struggling. We pay over $800 in rent. Did you give her a bottle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's hiding. Hold on, y'all. Now, like I said, friends, this, uh, this video was about <laughs> a lot of things. And I'm going to vote Trump because I don't agree with uh, a lot of things Kamala Harris says, how she's going to change the border policy and everything. And, um... Uh, if, if she's vice president, she should have been making these changes a long time ago, especially since Joe Biden's incompetent. He's not well. He isn't. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like, subscribe, and share this with anybody you can. These are my personal opinions. I'm not trying to sway you guys on who to vote for, but if you really care for your family and, uh, want to make a better life for yourself, I'd vote Trump. I mean, he's done some shady garbage in his past. He has. But his policies are solid. I think so. 
And I, I focus on the policies because the policies of the uh, Biden, uh, Kamala Her- uh, Harris administration have absolutely decimated this country. We're at a third world war at this point. Israel is ready to attack Iran. And we're all involved. We're all involved. It's going to hurt us. And it would have never happened if Trump was in office. But anyway, anyways, God bless you all. Take care. And the Coleman family say, have a good one, everybody. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay.